Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining our meeting uh, for Onyx uh, Training Working Group. Uh, today is uh, September 3rd, after Labor Day. And, uh, today we have here uh, four people from IBM and uh, three people from Microsoft, I believe. Uh, I hope other people can join us as well, but so far they haven't. Um, so uh, today we are going to discuss, uh, continue discussing the training proposal that Weishank uh, gave us and uh, all the related issues. So uh, you, uh, you all probably attended the meeting uh, in Silicon Valley uh, yep. last, last month, right? Yes, I am. Yeah. Uh, okay, so um, I guess I don't need to repeat what was there. Uh, so, Weishank, do you have any updates to your proposal since then? Uh, actually, no. Um, I, I'm basically in a stage that uh, I need someone to tell me what they need. For example, uh, if, uh, if the proposal can, uh, can, cap can really capture the scenario they are doing. Of course, uh, I have been, uh, I, at least that proposal can already capture um, all the target scenario in my mind, and uh, it can also support high order differentiation. Not sure if you guys are familiar with that. So, I mean, uh, you guys need to tell me what you want from, from me because that proposal is already stable. Okay, that's good. Now, do you have, uh, so you, I think you provided one example of uh, Onyx uh, document for a very simple model, right? Yep. In your representation. Do you have any more complicated examples or do you plan to create some? I see, I see. Sounds, uh, yeah, I can create some more, uh, more complicated one, yes. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, I think that it would be good to have uh, some examples of uh, like maybe a ResNet or some, you know, some of the models. I, so, I don't know if I want to try some recurrent networks as well. I can try some of them. Yeah, sure. Okay. So that's uh, one aspect of testing. So we need various examples. Um, Another aspect, of course, is uh, that we need uh, to be able to uh, see how it trans uh, how it uh, could be converted to and from various uh, frameworks, right? Do yes, so like... for that I already need help from from other people. Yes, I believe there was a person from Microsoft who promised to help with some testing, right? Yes, uh, that was Benton, uh, but unfortunately he didn't join today. I, I, I can switch him later after this meeting. Okay, that would be good. Uh, now, uh, and there was another person, there was a person from uh, GraphCore who also wanted to test some. And hello. Think... Yes, I've just I've just joined. Oh, hello. This is this is James from GraphCore. Yes, thank you, James, for joining. So, uh, have you made any progress on the testing? Um, unfortunately, I haven't yet uh, looked um, into the uh, the PR in any detail. Oh, by the way, do you think uh, we should merge everything to a Huge pull request so that everyone can uh, check out and sync with the whole training proposal easy. Or we need to, we just need to make them one by one. Um, I think that the um, so the generation of the backwards graph and the optimizer could be kept separate. Uh, yes, sure. Uh, I, I'm only talking about the spec and uh, some uh, new operators definition. Okay. 
I think it might be helpful, right, if we have everything in one place rather than multiple. So, does everyone agree with that? Uh, if everyone agrees with that, we can, uh, I can, I guess I can merge it in and do a big chunk. Yeah, that's fine with me. Any objections to that? So, um, when you are when you are trying trying to use uh, our new proposal or new proposal, um, did you face any difficulty like you you need to merge um, multiple PRs into your local uh, branch to make the proposal really working? It's it's a very um, Difficult experience to to everyone. I believe Chin is the only one who has said it so far. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, so far, I just pick up relations uh, 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 branch and uh, commit, and I was able to at least do some of my you know, exercise. Uh, is it is it very difficult for you to uh, merge multiple ones, or you feel fine? Uh, keep that separate. I, I feel it's fine, but uh, at the same time, I don't know for sure if I got all the latest from you, to be honest, right? For instance, your, your gradients may not be in the, the, the command I, I used. So, so it would be nice to have a you know, simple way to get all the you know, uh, additions for training in, in one on the same mm -hmm. Okay. But, but of course, it will make the, the review a little bit more difficult because <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it will make it you new, new, new operator type and everything. I, I I don't know which way is the best, best honestly. But uh, you know, for people to you know uh, try training out, I think having simpler way to get all the changes that that's important. Okay, makes sense. So, so uh, yeah, maybe, I maybe time in here. Uh, yeah, you can think about it. Uh, you want to merge PRs, that that's fine. Uh, at least uh, uh, I, I've done that exercise. Uh, like I said earlier, I may not even have your latest, uh, like for gradient. But I like to have the you know everything latest. Right. Okay. Okay, that's good. Uh, so, uh, James, uh, you will go into test. Uh, which aspects again? James, you are on mute currently. Yeah, so uh, we could test implementing the spec in a back end. So taking a model which has got uh, the gradients and optimizer in, inside it using the new spec and see if we can get that to work on our back end. Okay. Yeah, um, would that be useful? I think so. Yeah, it would be quite useful. So, so that something, uh, I, I, I think we probably should do two sort of uh, parts, right? One one is to have this back end tested, and the other one is the front end, right? So, so for the back end, for instance, we don't need to worry about how to create the Onyx file itself. So for instance, you know, you have this simple, uh, you know, model to start with. Maybe later on, like uh, you know, we talked earlier, we want to have a more difficult or you know, complex one. So maybe we can have two example files. So for the back end, they can always take these two and try to make it to train, right, in different backgrounds. Right? Yeah. So, so, so that's the one part I, I just wonder how we can make this whole you know, practice or, or experimental easier. Right, so wishing I'm gonna ask you to help 
because you already opened a few PRs, maybe you can merge them into one, and, and maybe you can even put uh, some pre-created uh, the Onyx files or just include the scripts, right, to, to create a new Onyx files. So that's mm -hmm. one part I think we should be working on, right? Okay, yeah, sure. part, no problem. Uh, makes sense, right? So the second part is the front end. The front end, I, I believe, is going to be coming from um, some, you know, uh, framework, right, like PyTorch. Okay. This uh, model. I want to see again some way to generate the target Onyx file from them. And for that exercise, um, maybe we can ask uh, Spenden or someone to kind of come up with a proposal, a, a generic way. So once he's done that once, we can ask maybe the second uh, from to try to go through that. Right, so so that's why I, I think there are two parts in this training. Uh, before we can say oh, the proposal is solid, it's all working. Right, we should separate from that. So I think we, feedback. I think it would be a good idea if we write down a proposal and then share it and agree it with the rest of the community. What we don't want to do is do some testing, think we're happy with it, try and then propose it to the rest of the community, and they say oh, actually we wanted X, Y, and Z also done. So it's probably worth agreeing what these steps are to validate that the training proposal is good enough with everyone before we even start doing it. Well, we kind of presented uh, at the workshop to those present at the But I don't workshop. think we necessarily got sign off that that was, you know, we will test with PyTorch and TensorFlow and we will run it on a GPU and an IPU. Is that sufficient for everyone to accept that this training proposal is good enough to, to commit? Uh, well, it would be better to have more frameworks involved. Uh, I, don't know how to I understand do that, but it's a time issue, isn't it? You know, so each framework will take a certain amount of time. The more frameworks, which I imagine people will want, the more effort we will be required to prove that. So as long as if we can get an agreement on two, and there's more chance of us getting it in. If we have to do five, then it's a lot of effort on our part. That's, that's why I think we should try and agree with them what the set the scope is. Otherwise, like yourself, I think people in the community will come back and say, I want it on Keras and I want it on MLK, DNN, and whatever else is out there. And that might slow down us getting this in. So how do we do that? Well, just like we pushed out our um, scope, so we, we, we defined what the, the purpose of this working group is and we put a document out for review, I think we should do a similar thing with the scope of what we will use to validate training is correct. Uh, so do we put it on Gitter or somewhere else? Well, I think we need to put it on Gitter and uh, provide it to the um, other working groups and also the steering committee to make sure that that level of testing we do is sufficient for them to accept the training proposal. Okay. Sounds good. Well, does, uh, anyone, does anyone have a different opinion? Sorry. Talk to me. Okay. So... Uh, Hmm. What's going on there? Sorry, uh, that's coming from my end. I'm looking for the uh, mute to get going. Okay, thank you. Um, I believe there's Onyx working groups. Uh, get up. Yes. I see Edge there. I don't see Tree. So maybe we start, uh, uh, you know, more Yes, uh, I was going to document. put things on GitHub. I haven't gotten to it, but I will. Right, I, I think, right, we put our, our you know, test cases and, and more, you know, agreed statements there so people can look at it. Okay. And review. So I, I think, yes, uh, we can put on Gitter and uh, on GitHub. And... Uh, uh, I think Simon suggested that we send it to steering committee, right? I mean, ultimately, those people will have to say on whether we are able to commit 
training changes. So I think we need to get their agreements to what is sufficient in order to validate them. Yeah. Yeah, I guess steering committee would be the highest authority to approve that. Uh, the fix uh, who should be approving our things are uh, what operations and uh, infrastructure, right? Fix. Fix. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Roma, do you have any idea? Roma, are you there? You're muted. No? Roma is on mute. Yeah, uh, so, sorry, I, I also had trouble finding the unmute button. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I. Yeah, I guess uh, I would say SIG architecture. Uh, I mean, unless somebody decides training is important enough, you should become a SIG. Uh, SIG arc sounds. Uh, the uh, core one, right? The other one is operators. So, so we just need to get approval from uh, SIG infrastructure. Uh, how about yeah. operations? Operators. We are adding some new operators. Yeah, we also need approval from that group as well. Any, yeah, any, any, yeah. Any other thing we need to get approved? Uh, we don't need to, to get one from Model Zoo. And what else do we have? I forgot. Ah, but from a Model Zoo uh, point of view, do we need? Do we need models updated that are trainable in Model Zoo? I guess we need a few small models at least for demonstrating the idea. Yeah, and the converters, of course. Well, we have our converters leader here, Chin. <laughs> uh, yes, converters would need to agree as well, I think, right? But model, uh, the model the example model is not a it's not an a, a requirement to uh to push that into the manager's factory, right? It can be a separate task. So I guess we just need infrastructure, operator and the converter. Yeah. I agree. The the zoo can come later. Yeah. Yes. And I think there is no leader yet, so it's okay. But if we make sure that we've raised this definition of what we will do and which groups we need to get approval from and agree that is the set of things we need to do, then there's not a chance later on that somebody says, well, I'm not going to accept this because you haven't done this other thing. Right, yeah. Yeah, it helps to know what, uh, who should agree. So basically, we listed here almost everyone. So. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's why it must take a long time. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so if every uh, all of those agree, then it's fine. Uh, do we need to have some kind of criteria about whether the test has passed? So we are doing several tests, I assume. Uh, so do we need to have some criteria on whether a test passed or failed? I, I, I think we need to have some test cases as well, right? I think during the workshop, uh, uh, someone you know, asked that question. Okay. Right. So to go with this PR or the set of PRs, or do we have a unit test, and what, how, how do we prove that uh, right, works? Uh, well, I was thinking that uh, the examples that Weishank uh, promised to provide us, uh, plus uh, the tests that we are trying to create here. Uh, those will be our essential uh, like unit tests. But I guess the gradient operator is going to be very difficult to unit test. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, it will be. Creating tests for that is not that hard. I mean, but. Just an off, right? Uh, yeah, it's an up. It's just an up. 
the difficult so, part is to have a unis, universal engine to compute the gradient of any graph. It will be very difficult. But creating tests, more tests, it should be fine. But there's a lot of work for every operator to define what the gradient output should be for a set of inputs. Oh, oh, um, I. So, uh, do you expect there to be for every operator that we have in the Onyx spec for there to be unit tests to prove that the gradient operator uh, that a backend implements is correct, or are we not interested in proving that? So there are some operators uh, which are simple. We can really create their background operator or using the current Onyx operators to represent their backward graph. But there are also some very difficult um, operators. For example, um, I forgot its exact name, but ROI is one example. It's very hard. Yeah, and, I guess we need uh, to figure out how we're going to add it to the unit testing framework. So, well, I mean, I, I mean, it's coverage that is more challenging, right? I mean, uh, creating specific yeah. unit test cases should be doable. I mean, it is. How do you ensure coverage of all operators? Uh, I mean, it's probably it's probably useful to build some. Uh, extra testing infrastructure just for gradient. Um, it will be a small, it, it was small combination engine for Onyx Graph. That uh, invest. So I guess one thing we haven't discussed. I don't know if there's any plan to. Specify the gradients of ops in some in some fashion and capture it as part of the Onyx repository. Sorry, uh, are you saying does it make sense to add a new part of the description of an operation which defines what the gradient should be, how the gradient should behave? Right. What the mathematical pro process is that it should do. Well, the the gradient of specific operators. Do we? Yes. Is that a? I mean. Wait, that doesn't it matter what kind of uh, er, uh, loss function you have? That I mean, that's sort of orthogonal, right? I mean the. Uh, I mean, we, we have gradient top that is generic, works for any graph, basically any subgraph. And okay. we can, in terms of test cases, we can add test cases for individual ops one by one. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I, it's, I think. That's doable. It is uh, ensuring coverage of all the ops will take. How many operators do we have in Onyx now? I think more than 100, probably. Was it like 200 or something? Somewhere in between 100 and 200. I, uh, okay, uh, I, that would be a piece of work. Uh, so we probably should distribute it somehow. Invite volunteers to. Uh, before, sorry, uh, before we commit to do this, like I, I, I personally feel that it's, 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 it's the, it's probably something that we, we should skip. I see the gradient operator as a placeholder, and uh, it's up to each end uh, backend to decide how to implement it. So the correctness. Of the grand up, it's 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 on each backend. So do we have to validate that the backend comes up with the right answers, like we do with the sort of the forward operations in the unit testing at the moment? 
So are you saying that we need to make sure that it's numerically, uh, the computation is numerically correct? We sort of do that at the moment for the forward operations. You know, if you yeah, do so like if it's just for the numerical to... correctness, I have a proposal. I have a way to test it. That is, we we can numerically approximate the gradient. You take an F, uh, you perturbate it by a delta X, like you have an FX and you have a delta uh, F X plus delta X, and then you take the difference and divide by delta X. That's a pr approximation of the gradient. So if we are just trying to verify its numerical correctness, I think we can provide a helper function to uh, basically plug two op and then fit uh, uh, two inputs with a uh, minor difference and then uh, try to approximate its gradient. And then uh, it's backend's job to verify that uh, it's close to this approximation. This is okay. how currently okay. this is how all the ops, like the gradient ops is verified in TensorFlow and Onyx, uh, also in Onyx runtime. And how do That's you pick idea, delta then? X? Sorry? How do you decide what delta X is good enough? Uh, uh, you, you pick something small. <laughs> like in terms of uh, like singularity points, like no matter how small the X is, uh, the X approximation won't be correct. But it's uh, it's just a safeguarding uh, mechanism. Uh, yes. So one point, uh, Sherlock uh, just mentioned is that sometimes, or I mean, oftentimes, the gradient is not a unique value. It's a range, and it can vary from zero to one. That's that's ha that happens when the function is not differentiable. For example, in the ReLU, it has a disk. Uh, at the point of zero, uh, it's not differentiable. Right, so, it's just one point, everywhere else it's very well differentiable. Well, it's one point, but that point can, uh, frequently happens in practice. I see. Right. Uh, ju just uh, to understand, uh, I mean, I think. Uh, Sorry. Okay, we, we are talking about unit test cases, right? So, I mean, uh, Weixing, your point is, of course, true, but it's slightly different, right? That the derivative may not be defined at certain points. Uh, there may be points of discontinuity, etc. That's fine. But when we are designing unit test cases, you can choose the points where the gradients are being computed and. Okay. Yeah. You can check yes. if it is right or wrong, and uh, um, so so you, you we can design unit test cases that are well defined as a way of validating correctness. I see. Okay. Uh, I see. Uh, and of course, Sherlock's point is interesting uh, in that you could have a generic mechanism in stuff. That works for arbitrary subgraphs based on perturbation. The, yeah, uh, if we are willing to write space test cases individually for many ops, they can be done. I guess Sherlock's suggestion is. Uh, it it avoids the work, but yeah, I'm not. So I can I can say that in both TensorFlow unit test and uh, Onyx runtime, like the way that we are currently how we implement it, it is the way that we test the correctness of the gradient ops. So the backends have to have some way to guard uh, the correctness on the implementation of these uh, its kernels for some uh, gradient ops. But I am the thing that I'm not sure is whether the spec like need to have this responsibility to to check this because we don't have a gradient op um, defined anywhere. In in theory, the gradient operator is a graph transformation uh, operator. Yeah, it, it it is higher order, but uh, so the unit ca test cases, however, sidestep that right because you can say okay the gradient for this subgraph for at this input point 
should have this value, right? So, yeah. Yeah, but it's really hard to cover all the ops at every value. It it almost yeah. requires a backend <laughs> to do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, but but that, that's the thing about unit test cases, right? It is. I mean, c coverage is a different issue. Coverage is always hard with unit test cases, but but even for the normal Onyx ops for uh, we have test cases and they of course don't guarantee correctness for at all points, but they are just tell us at specific points it seems to work, right? So uh, I mean, you, you unit test cases never give you coverage anyway. That is always true, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so what I'm hearing is that you guys uh, have some uh, unit tests that uh, maybe it won't be very difficult to contribute them into unit tests for this uh, gradient operator. Is that right? No, the unit test is strongly binded to our backend. Uh -huh. You need a kernel to run that unit test. So you cannot just uh, take them and adjust for, for this somehow? Yeah. I see. OK. Um, does it mean that we cannot uh, do unit tests of gradient operator without having some kind of runtime? Uh, can we print out the? Can we somehow print out the value in our next runtime? Print out input and output, and I mean save them as our next format. But it will contains the offs that is uh, not in our next spec. Like for example, let's say we have conf. Like in order to compute gradient, we need a conf grad. But conf grad is not in the public spec. We can definitely dump the model, but it's not a, a valid public model. Uh, I thought the uh, Onyx runtime was open source. Yeah, but we, uh, our, our training is uh, in the internal repo, and we introduce right. a lot of uh, gradient operator in order to, to actually do the work, do the, do the backward computation. Okay. Uh, should that be part of this work? No, like we, this is the reason why we introduced this gradient off, right? So we don't need to, we don't have to explicitly define every gradient op or every existing op. So it's a symbolic representation of all the gradients. Okay. So that's why like, I am feeling that uh, the, the numerical correctness is not in the plate of the spec. Uh, the symbolic representation, its ability to symbolically represent uh, the gradient computation case, is the thing that we actually need to test. Can I add to what Sherlock is saying and um, mention that there is a working group for testing and compliance and maybe this falls into the, into the domain. Yes, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. OK. Uh, and and, and I think there is a requirement from the operator SIG as well, right? Like uh, that in each and every new op needs to be represented with, uh, with sort of a unit test or a compliance test. Yeah, I agree. Like, but um, I feel this gradient op is a very, very special case. We can definitely uh, add, uh, seek for advice. Like, yeah, yeah. The, it is, yeah, it is a special op. And, uh, uh, it's a higher order op. So uh, yeah, the test cases. Yeah, but and really, also I feel that like. Uh, uh, we need to come up with a proposal on how to so-called unit test this up. 
before we present this to the unit, the, 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 the op, uh, right. Yeah. Okay. Like, because we understand that this better than, you know, than anyone else that, you know, this is a very, very special uh, op that is uh, needed for training. Okay. Uh, it's many, many operations. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah. But I guess we're happy with unit testing losses and optimizers. Yeah, like optimizer is deterministic. It's it's very well defined. I think uh, we uh, we can have it covered. But yes, it's great. Uh, it's it's very uh, abstract. Okay, Sherlock, uh, could is. you please maybe write some kind of document, uh, short document explaining this and post yeah. it uh, somewhere yeah, sure, sure. on the Git or something? Thank you. Yeah, so we need to, to document what we are doing about this. Exactly. I think we need to understand what's the, what the sufficient amount of testing is, given the technical challenges of unit testing the gradient top or proving that a back end has compliance with the Onyx spec as to what the gradient should do. Yeah, Especially when people add new operations how do we know somebody has a new operation? How do we know what the correct gradient is? It might not always be clear, especially the, some of the non-mathematical ones that are being added. Yes. Right. Okay. Find bounding box. Right. Okay. So Sherlock will create some kind of document and we can discuss it next time, right? Okay. Yeah, I can, I can, I can take a look. Thank you, Sherlock. Uh, okay, and uh, so let's see. Uh, so so for, for unit tests, I, I think gradient is only one of them. We also need to have unit tests for optimizers and loss functionals, right? Yes. Uh, yes, there are normal optimizers, so they will come with some meaningful unit tests. Right. Okay, so do we already have a uh, unit test for optimizers and the uh, loss function? For well, optimizer, yes, loss function, not yet. Okay. So that's a uh, question. Right? You, you can possibly help to right, define some unit tests or provide some unit tests. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. okay. Sounds good. Okay, so we seem to define unit tests for optimizers. Uh, I already defined. Ah, oh, already done. Some <laughs> tests for each optimizer, and uh, I guess the test I got, I just got is to create some unit tests for those function. So you will create a unit tests for those functions. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Okay. So, so there was another point that someone raised. Um, it's probably worth coming to an agreement on is whether the operation, the operator definition, needs to have a description of what the gradient operation should do. Do we feel that the operators need to be updated with some text regarding the the function of the gradient operator? So. I guess for we can incrementally add that information after we're checking this training proposal. Well, I guess we need to update the uh, the IR definition, or the you know, we need a placeholder to put that information in at least. Oh, sorry, uh, why do we need to have uh, an IR change to? To compute we could add it as part of the description, or we could add it as a separate field in every op saying gradient function definition. So it is doable for some operator, but it will be very hard for 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 some very complicated operator as well. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I agree. I think... And if somebody comes up with a new, even more complicated one. You might be scratching your head as to how to implement the back the, the gradient. 
I think you'd want them to try and uh, describe that to you or um, say this operation cannot be trained. Uh, I think come on. suggested that we just compute uh, every gradient as a difference as by definition of derivative, like f of x plus double uh, plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x. Um, yeah, th th that's a numeric computation, right? So, yeah, I mean. But there is a mathematical definition of what a gradient should be. So I'm not sure when we talk about um, complex operators having um, complex gradients, are we saying that um, they're, well, they're complex because because the chain rule generates a complex expression. Um, can we not just make the spec um, follow the rules of calculus to determine what the gradients of the inputs are? Um, I imagine that will cover the majority of the cases. So, so, sorry, just to make sure I understand. I mean, I, I guess what one of the proposal is to see whether for ops we can have a way of attaching its derivative as a symbolic function, right? Uh, that, that is, express the gradient of each onyx op in symbolic form as a function. And as Wei Sheng was saying, I, I mean, I think it, it's doable for at least for some of the ops, and in the long run, it may be useful for multiple purposes, so it could be used to help with the testing we were just discussing, for example, uh, that the gradient computation is being done correctly and so on. It could even be used to automatically produce the gradient, maybe. But uh, so it can be done, it seems useful, but as Wei Sheng was asking, maybe, I, I, I mean, I, I'm not clear whether it has to be coupled completely with the other changes. I mean, it could be something that is done separately, right? And, uh, uh, I mean, do they have to all be done together? That's not... I, I don't feel it's, it, it's, a, uh, it's an efficient to, down offset, to do offset at one time because that, yeah. that, that doesn't sound possible to me. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think, I think it's a useful thing to do, but yeah, maybe decoupling them is... Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I guess my question is, for a lot of the ops, the definition of the backwards op is implicit in the definition of the forwards op. And for those ops, will we, are we going to eventually explicitly state what the backwards op is, even though its definition is implicit in the definition of the forward op? So, so, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the, so. If an op is expressed as a function in onyx, in terms of other onyx ops, then that function specification suffices to produce the computation, and could be used as a fallback if that's what you are referring to. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. But even the even the ones which, for example, um convolution it isn't expressed as a function it's 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 a leaf um but from the definition if the definition of convolution is complete it should imply what the backwards ops definition is uh, yeah uh, yes but it's not captured formally in the onyx specs anywhere to, uh, to today right so no well no it's captured formally because a well-defined forward definition can, I mean, everyone can, if they want to spend enough time, can drive the backward equation from the forward definition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I guess what I meant was it is not captured in a machine usable form today in Onyx. The, the, uh, uh, the semantics of a convolution operator is not captured in a, machine readable format today and so cannot be used as the basis for automatically 
producing a Canadian today, right? Uh, uh, so I was trying to answer this question of whether there is some mechanism for automatically computing the gradient from some formal specification of the op semantics. And I guess we need to manually write it down. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was trying to say. So I guess that will be a separate task if we really want to have that, because as a, as a from the from a perspective of a standard, defining forward is enough for defining a, a well-defined backward. Yeah, yeah. That's so we 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 actually uh, don't miss anything. It's having the um, some equations for describing the backward path are something nice to have but uh, not much to have for spec. Yeah, yeah, that, that I agree. I mean, I was, yeah. Yes, um, and then there are possibly, I'm not sure about this, uh, ops for which um, a well-defined forwards is, is not sufficient. So sometimes you need to specify which of the inputs um, can be, can have a gradient computed for it. Um, so something like batch normalization, um, some of the inputs do have gradients, but some of them are updated using uh, running, well, the running mean and the running variance. I see. So prob there's probably some cases like that where you, you do need to um, specify explicitly what you expect to be done. Okay, so I think my conclusion is that it's, it's a complicated issue. Um, and uh, so uh, I think we agreed that Sherlock would write some document about this uh, unit test for gradient. And so maybe next time we, uh, we can look at that document and go from there. Because uh, so far I'm hearing uh, two different uh, things that some people say that uh, it's possible to just do numeric differentiation and not worry about specifying explicit uh, gradient, while others are saying that it's not always possible. Uh, Right? Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, so, uh, so Sherlock will write some document, and uh, if uh, others have uh, strong opinions, please uh, also maybe write some uh, specific uh, information that you have into the Gitter uh, chat, and then we could discuss further. Okay, uh, now my next question was, um, okay, so here we were talking about unit tests, uh, but do we have any criteria for the like overall test of uh, of this? So if we have, uh, like uh, when Chin wa was doing his example, he was training a network in uh, PyTorch, I think, and then uh, imported it into, TensorFlow and trained in TensorFlow and compared the results. So uh, can we have some kind of uh, such overall test uh, criteria to decide what test failed and what succeeded? How do we compare results in different frame after training in different frameworks? I would vote for some sort of model level test that right? we can take a simple model and put it there and then the expected uh, training results maybe we need to get within certain accuracy. Yes, and how do we decide which accuracy is good enough and which is not? I, I don't know. Maybe it's up to us too. Yeah. Okay, well, perhaps we can worry about this once we have enough examples of various conversions between different frameworks. 
using this uh, representation. Uh, but also a question is uh, when uh, when Kim did his uh, test, uh, there was this uh, this table here. Yes, can you see this uh, table? Yes. Yeah, so some of the things that were in the Onyx spec uh, did not get uh, mapped anywhere. Uh, and uh, I wonder if we are trying to do a mapping in the other direction, uh, would we know what to put into those things? Into the uh, output. So, so for a graph node, uh, why TensorFlow get an an A? I mean, that is that the inference graph? No. Chin, do you oh. have an answer to this? Oh, okay. Uh, NA means we don't uh, use it directly because we're not, right now we just look at the one graph, right? So this new new graph now uh, pointing to a, a function is something new, right? So is that, that's the indirection, right? Yes. So we simply look at one graph. Yes, but that uh, functional would be stored or, I mean, it will be it will be called in, or invoked in the in one element of the graph node field. Right, uh, exactly. That, that's the, the way uh, we do interaction within Onyx spec. I'm just saying in TensorFlow, we don't do this sort of interaction, right? There's no additional wrapping for the, the graph. Wrapper, right now we have this proxy, right? From the main graph, you can have uh, reference to a function, right? So I'm just saying that kind of notation is not applicable in TensorFlow. I'm just saying that the information okay. we captured, if we can find equivalent in TensorFlow. I see, okay. I mean, it's a technique, right? Sometimes the technique we don't apply in certain framework, which is okay. Yep. As long as I get enough critical information to do training, that's important, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Here, I'm just saying for certain you know techniques we do in Onyx may not apply when I convert to the TensorFlow. That's all. Uh, does it mean that if we were trying to convert the other directions that we would? No, no. The, 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 there's no indication in this table about the other direction, right? Because all the element on the left, that's the Onyx, uh, you know, training info and gradient, everything, how we produce that. I have no idea, right? Because that has to come from the front end converter. That's where, you know, we're still waiting for Spenden and maybe even Gramte to provide some update. Yeah, do you know if Gunter had any progress? I, I, I asked him, I have a meeting with yeah. him later, yeah. How did you know? Okay. Uh, so, uh, okay, yeah, we need more information about testing this to see how things work. And, uh, yeah. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, so from my perspective, those NAs are kind of expected. So I have, I, I have no question for that. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, well, I think we are running out of time here. Uh, when should we meet next time? In one week or in two weeks? Uh, actually, can I propose something here? Yes. So in our next meeting, can we invite the uh, related uh, stakeholders from the other uh, C group? So for example, the operators, um, you know, and the, the, the framework team, so that we can ask 
present this to them and then ask them to take a closer look. Sounds Are we ready idea. to present to them? Yeah, I think we already like uh, go through them in the uh, in the public uh, in the in the in the in phase meeting, right? So it's more of uh, you know discussing discussing the details like that we the concerns that we bring up in this meeting. Yeah. So but, can you help uh, summarize the the concerns okay, uh, that we have we have bring up and then uh, you know send them an invite some and 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 then discuss it in our next meeting. I agree. It's good to have others to you know uh, validate and you know. Uh, but I also think we should at least put clearly what we are trying to get them review or more official way, right? So if you can have an official document somewhere, including all the details we are intending to do, including how we unit test, right? I think that's better. Rather than we go through the first round with a rough idea, then we. Later on, that's my yeah, I would like to see a little more testing done before we uh, invite them, maybe. Right, because right now I haven't heard anybody from the front end converter saying this is doable. Right? Yeah, but we need to engage them to uh, have a preliminary uh, like suggestions, for example, like from the converter group. Yeah. Yeah, so, so so can we at least document exactly what is needed and how we are going to approach if we want this to be approved, right? What is included in the whole package? Do we have a clear definition on that to present? I, I don't want to be leaving a lot of, you know, room for, you know, Yeah, I, I, I feel yeah, the situation. So let's be very specific because it's a PR. If this is approved, it will be part of the feature, right? Yeah. So we can know exactly what's coming with that package, right? So how about it? So like once we merge the things that we into one PR, uh, I think like together with some documentation, that would be a complete proposal. Yeah. And then I, we would I, I like to engage other teams to to help reviewing this. I agree. Yes. Okay. Good idea. Yeah. Like we. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, maybe uh, you guys, Vaishen and Sherlock, could work with uh, your person from uh, Microsoft who was going to test more uh and uh, encourage them to do the testing in the converting from tensorflow into onyx uh, and maybe present to us next time right i i have I, yeah sure i can i can push it but so, um, i'll try thank you okay should we meet in one week or in two weeks two two, in two weeks two. okay Okay, so I'll set up the next meeting in two weeks, and you please uh, send me names of those people to emails of those people who should be invited. Okay? Who will send the list? Uh, whoever wants me to invite somebody, please send me the information. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, great. Thank you so much. Uh, let's uh, continue working on this and uh, keep in touch by Gitter. Okay. Have a nice two weeks. Yep. Thank you all. Got Bye. You. See you. Bye.